Dow has been a market that I've talked about in a couple of updates here in the, uh, the Simple Trading YouTube channel. And if you haven't been checking these out on a regular basis, please do. I think about new members or folks that are interested in becoming members, folks that are interested in, in trading. I think about that specifically when I do these, these updates. And, and the Dow, I, I want to be a buyer. All right, so let's talk about why. I want to be a buyer, why? Okay, it's the indicators. It's, it's what the environment is indicating. So I've seen better trends, no doubt, okay? But we can, tr we can see this market is trying to gain some bullish traction. It's not convincing yet, and you, you can see that the indicator at the very bottom of my screen, the JT Multi, which is measuring the 8, 13, 21, and 34 EMAs, okay, is indicating that it's, it's sideways right now, but when it's it's kind of like watching a pickup truck stuck in the mud gaining traction a little bit. It spins, 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 gets a little traction, surges forward a bit. Spins, 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 gains track. We're pretty sure it's gonna be able to pull out of whatever mess it's in because it's able to gain traction a little bit. It's kind of like the spinning and the move higher and the spinning and the move higher that we're talking about. So my bet is gonna be on catching traction, moving higher. But the trick is always when a trend is not well, uh, not observing the wave well, what, what is the issue? Here's my wave, my 34 EMA wave. If it's not observing the support of the wave zone well, and it hasn't, where is it going to gain traction? All right, so this is where we need to think about other layers of clarity. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I've got a Darvis down in here. Got a pretty decent volume ledge right about there, just in front of it. We've had support from this area before, which is why this Darvis is sitting there. So we know price-wise. And if you'll notice, we've stopped at the plus one V score, but we've also been down to about a point, I think I said about a point seven O V score. See, standard deviations just don't conveniently move in plus one, plus two, plus three. That's one of the mistakes a lot of traders make when they're looking at standard deviations. Sometimes it can be more granular, like a 0 0.70 exhaustion, like we see back here on July 19. So we could see that V-score low hold. We could even see the V-score low from June 18 hold. Having said that, having said that, I am looking for some traction. So I'll look at where we've caught traction before. I'll look at the things that have shown that we're likely to gain traction. And so this is the difficulty in trading chop. Now I have to contrast the Dow. I am interested in the Dow and on Monday, I'd love to see a slightly lower low, put in a minor low and, and hit this Darvis support. I would love to see this level hit, but I want to contrast the Dow to the S&P. This pullback is far better than the Dow in terms of structure. The NASDAQ, well, the NASDAQ is really where, if the NASDAQ is most resilient, we know that the number one weighted sector in the Dow is financials, but number two is tech, Apple and Microsoft. In the S&P, the number one weighted sector, tech. Who's going to disproportionately benefit from the relative outperformance in the NAS? The S&P will. So I don't want anyone to think that you can't trade the Dow. I just don't want you to neglect the S&P. Now, why not trade the NASDAQ? It's not in the zone that I can buy from. It's just really that simple. So... I don't mind either, but if I'm going to play the Dow, it's not just XLK. And by the way, XLK is looking more and more interesting as well as it's heading down towards the wave. But I've got to keep an eye on XLF. XLF as well. XLF is going to be tell, is going to tell me a lot more about where the Dow is going. 
while XLK is going to tell me a lot more about where the S&P is going. Both of them are absolutely on the watch list. I want to be a, a buyer. Why? Um, we've got Darvis and B-score support coming up. Uh, S&P, again, I want to be a buyer. And then the question is, uh, why? Well, NASDAQ relative out performance. Okay, XLK is a big part of that as well. And we've sunk into the wave, right? With, with double green, you know, nice uh, double green market structure. As opposed to uh, yellow neutral to bullish structure on the Dow. So the, the S&P wins out in a, in a number of ways and it all comes down to, it all comes down to the indicators. And I know a lot of you were already with me for the workspace bundle. So if some of these indicators are brand new to you, I realize for some of you, some of this stuff might be brand new. Um, we have day two coming up on Monday for the indicators. So you can check that out, but this is how we put them to work. And this is where the S&P edges out the Dow by a little bit. Now, once you have the clarity here, you can keep digging. XLK, XLF, XLV, right? You start looking at the, the sectors and the individual stocks. But I would definitely keep an eye on, on the S&P uh, for Monday. Definitely. I would love, if the market closes heavy, like it looks like it wants to do, you know, the five minute intraday just continues to sink lower. The market closes heavy. I'll look for a little bit more weakness on Monday. You know, don't fade Fridays, right? That's a huge, 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 um, I've talked about this before. Don't fade Fridays. Let's let's wait till Monday. So a lot of folks say, oh, it's weak. Let's buy it. Be very careful, right? If you are buying, it's going to be at an aggro level where you know you're just putting a little bit skin in the game and then you'll probably scale in a little bit more come Monday or, or and then we maybe we can take advantage of a turnaround Tuesday. Don't fade Fridays. We will look to set up trades on Monday, right? And then maybe, and then maybe benefit from the turnaround Tuesday. All right. How's that for projecting out? But you know, there is some logic. There is some tendency to that relationship of Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. All right. So I hope that makes sense in terms of S&P Dow and the weakness that we're seeing. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.